You're watching Eagle Community Television. I'm Mike Kerner, and along with me is Don today. We're at the Ellis County Historical Museum. I want to talk about some big event that is happening. In fact, Don, there is a, kind of a focus on sporting events throughout museums in the state of Kansas right now. That's correct. And the one that's been chosen for the Ellis County Historical Museum is polo. And yes. I think if people look back, Hayes was very popular <coughs> with polo in the uh, yesteryears. That's true, and that's why we are the one featuring that as part of this Hometown Teams initiative through the Smithsonian Institution, which is being sponsored by the Kansas Humanities Council. But the thought was that uh, because each of the sites for these exhibits would focus on a sport that was popular in that particular location, polo would be appropriate for us because nobody else has that. We're well, the know, only place. I know they put little cards out. You've put little cards out. That's correct. And I, I, can people just stop in and pick up those playing cards? That's right. Well, not right. really playing cards, but they're like sports memorabilia cards. Right. They're really sort of in the category of baseball cards and football cards, trading cards from the past. Well, those are still popular, but I can think of them myself growing up having those. But these three that we have here are on polo, local teams that played polo. And so uh, those are free, though. Anybody who wants to come and get the set of three here at the Ellis County Museum, you're certainly welcome to come over and do that. Well, I know that this is, a, it was a very popular event. You look around at the pictures behind us and the display that's throughout right. the Ellis County Historical Museum. It's, it's really neat to kind of uh, look at some of the, uh, the horses and look at some of the names of people because that's true. you look at those names and they're very um, prominent names or there were figures uh, that, that we've, we've seen and had heard that's, of still today. That's right. If you come and see this, you're going to see some very familiar names among the people who played polo here, such as Dryling or Felton. And you'll realize that this has been a significant sport for Ellis County over the years, beginning in a sense with the British colony in Victoria in the 1870s. And from that heritage, it was uh, revived again then in the 1920s, then again in the 1940s with a whole new cast of characters. Well, I know that um, people will ask, where was the polo field? Because the polo oh, field is, right. is, is very large. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's bigger than a football field. And where was That's it right. here in Hayes? That's right. Well, the most organized effort to have a polo field here was at what was called Golden Belt Fairgrounds, which is today Lewis Field on the campus of Fort Hayes State University. And that's where the original fairgrounds here were of Ellis that's, County, weren't absolutely, they? Absolutely, that's right. Uh, now, there were games played by ranch and farm teams on ranches and farms, primarily ranches, in Ellis County. And uh, sometimes the teams from Hayes, such as the Hayes Polo Club or the Fort Hayes Polo Club, would actually play at those venues. But primarily, as you're saying, in terms of organized games, that was the main location. I know that you gave a presentation recently and you were talking about teams that came in there, and one of them that's that I remember right. was the Fairport team. That's how they, right. How they came in here, and, and I guess, uh, yeah, you right. know, you think about it, Fairport is what, about uh, 40 miles away or something like yeah, that? And yeah. you wonder how long on horseback would it have taken them to get here just for one game? Yeah, that's right, and, and it's good you mentioned that because that's an example of a team composed primarily of cowboys from ranches, and they had a somewhat different style of play. In fact, actually, when the Hayes Polo Club went to play them there in the Fairport area, they used gourds for balls and pitchforks for mallets. And they actually won the game utilizing those things, and thereafter, the uh, Hayes Polo Club said there would no more, be no more games with uh, pitchforks for mallets and gourds for balls. So that's uh, one of the events, that are, uh, that we, uh, not one of the events, but one of the uh, situations that they ran into. And, and you could look at the great pictures, look at the balls that are around here that they used. Right. Very light, they're almost like softball size, they but, they're, but they're very light. And you, you say gourds, and it has that kind of that plastic texture-like thing. That's right. I mean, today in polo, you can use a plastic ball, but these were wooden balls, basswood primarily. And when one of those would hit you at 200 miles an hour, you would probably notice that. I would think so. And they've got the hats to uh, kind of ward right. that off a little bit. And That's you can right. see some of the helmets that they used. Um, there's a lot of things on display that help yeah. talk about the polo events. That's right. And I should say that virtually all of the things on exhibit here belong to the Ellis County Historical Society as part of our collection. But they came from these original polo clubs or just some of the individuals who played on these ranch teams. But we do have some things on loan from the Phillip family, for example, because they were really involved in playing polo here locally. So we talked about polo, but that's not the only exhibit that's on display here at the Ellis County Historical Museum. They've got other great displays as well. You can stop by and see them. The hours here are? Well, 9 to 6, Tuesday through Saturday, and 1 to 6 on Sunday. And that's all year. We don't vary our hours uh, depending on the season. And I know that uh, you've got a great little book area, a little library, and people can oh, go to right. that gift store too because there's some great things in there. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes, our museum store is unusual in many respects because we carry books that you would not be able to really get anywhere else in Hayes. You'd have to go to at least Salina, maybe Wichita. Books on Western history, for example, dealing with Custer, Cody, and Hickok. And then we also have a tremendous 
selection on Volga German history as well. And that is not necessarily something you would have available to you anywhere else. So if you haven't had a chance to stop down here, it'd be probably a great mm -hmm. summer uh, place to stop with the kids, the family, or just yourself uh, for an afternoon and, and see all the great things that are on display here at the Ellis County Historical Museum. Don's with me. I'm Mike Kerner. Thank you for joining us here today. Very good. Thank you.